think I'll have a prayer and get started. I do appreciate our deacons helping with potluck today and uh, helping with the, getting things put together and ready to go. And uh, that's very helpful. <coughs> Thanks, Chuck. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and begin, um, and we'll just see uh, what what uh, we can accomplish this afternoon. I'm grateful for those who are here. I'm going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, as the Sabbath hours continue, I pray that the spirit of worship would continue in our hearts as well. And uh, I know many are enjoying their lunch together, uh, or maybe at home, and hopefully can join online. Um, but Father, we just want to seek your will for our church and for our family here. So may these uh, moments that we spend together uh, be filled with joy and uh, be helpful to us, Lord, uh, as, a, as a church. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Um, I've always been very impressed with the fact that God is a uh, very uh, clearly a God of order. Um, just by how he designed the world and the physics of our planet. When you look at how he instructed Israel in the building of the sanctuary and how they camped and how they performed their services, extremely orderly. In the New Testament, uh, Jesus begins to form the New Testament church. And, and the, uh, uh, in the book of Acts, they begin to identify the leadership structure. Paul, in the book of Titus, writes to the young pastor in Titus 1.5, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order that which remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. So um, the idea of being organized and being orderly and being thoughtful about what we do appeals to me and I think is very biblical. And this is part of the process of, of making sure that we are organizing and ordering our ministry uh, together in, in a thoughtful way. Um, just if you, have the, if you don't have this, it's going to be uh, probably difficult to follow along. There's a stack of them on the uh, round table out there, uh, and I have a, a couple here, um, because that's going to be the main uh, thing to look at and to, to give some explanations. I'm going to begin on the side, and I forgive me, but I'm going to be kind of flipping it around a bit here and there just to explain some things. I'm going to begin on the side that says Scottsdale Thunderbird Vision Survey Results. Um, and it says underneath that five-year vision, 2022 through 2026. And then I just try to give some biographical data. Number of surveys scored. We had 49 people, uh, you know, that were from the church that did fill out a survey. And then we, additionally, we had 25 dorm students. And, uh, I did segregate the scores, uh, between the two. I could have joined them together. Um, and we could still join them together. I mean, data is data. We can manipulate it a million ways. Um, but I left the two scores, uh, segregated. If you go to the bottom of the page, there's more data. Uh, on the church, for the church stats, we had 22 men and 25 women. So not quite 50-50, but really close. It wasn't heavily weighted male or female. It's pretty close. 31 households. That's an important number to me, um, to know that it wasn't just, four, you know, five large families, uh, that happened to be members that filled out surveys. It does spread out 31 households, uh, participated. And then we had three guests. Um, the age ranges are there, um, five people um, under the age of 20, 12 between 21 and 40, um, over the age of 41 to 60, 17, and then over 61, 13. A little more weighted toward the older folks, which is very normal for churches. It's not bad that we had um, 12, uh, 20, 30-year-olds and five under 20. Would have been nice to have a few more, but really uh, not bad overall to see the age um, spread. I did have two surveys that I could not read their names. There are actually a lot of surveys that I couldn't read their names, but I was able to track down all but two. So I just want, in all honesty and sharing, there were two surveys that are included in the church side that they had signatures I could not read, but they looked like legitimate surveys that were thoughtfully done, and so I included them. Among the dorms, uh, we had 11 boys fill it out and 14 girls. So that's the 25. That's all who filled out and kind of a bit of the data about who filled it out. Now, if you turn to the back page, 
again, I'm jumping around a bit. I apologize about that. I want to look at this corner that says notes. So not, not all the, um, the data and the lines, but, uh, just this bottom corner where I put notes. Um, the, and I think these are important to, to observe. There's no right or wrong scores. And I've been trying to say this throughout. All are important. If your favorite ministry is not highest on the list, I don't want you to view that as a slam or as a derogatory thing. Um, it, it, it is still part of our vision and we will address it in due course. But all scores and how people filled out the surveys are valid. Scores, and I, I mentioned this too in the instructions. Um, I ask people to avoid putting ones and tens <clears throat> in the scoring. Most people did, and that's okay. It's not wrong. It's just interesting to me when anyone puts all of their weight on one idea. They put a 10 on it. It's just interesting. Or when they put lots of ones, because both of those um, very limit the ability to um, expand or to um, see variety. And again, that doesn't mean it's wrong. To me, it's just interesting. It's interesting when you felt so strongly that you had to put all of your weight on one idea or you felt so unmotivated by the ideas that you put lots of ones. If you had like three, 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 and then one, one, because you had 10, that's different. But on a lot of surveys, it was like one, 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 two, you know? And so it's just kind of, they don't, it just shows that none of those were extremely passionate or that you just love them all so much you couldn't decide. And, and that's fine too. Again, if you want to text me at some point, I'm keeping my phone here for those watching from home. Um, the scores show the personality of the church and, uh, and individuals. And I mentioned before that when I was going through the surveys, even though I would take off the front page because I wanted to try to keep the scoring anonymous, um, even when I would take off the front page as I was, um, and then I would kind of randomize the groupings of, of pages as I was going through it, I could hear people just in the numbers they put. And uh, if Eva's watching, you're one of them. When I, when I was going through, I was like, I think this is Eva. I can just see. I know Eva well enough. I see how these scores, I just think this is Eva. And, you know, I couldn't prove that, of course. But you do get to kind of hear people's priorities and voices. Um, and, and it's actually kind of fun. The struggle to prioritize is real. And that may be the reason why people put lots of ones. They just could not bring themselves to say, no, I want to put more weight on this idea or not. And I understand that. And that's part of the struggle with us as a church. There's so many good ideas. We can't do them all, um, but we're trying to narrow it down to things that we agree on. Um, some ideas and scores are open to interpretation, and that's going to be part of the challenge of the church and of leadership moving forward. For example, under the church and Sabbath worship uh, category on the front page, the second one under that says improve audio and visual ministry. And so that received strong support from church, but that's kind of open to interpretation, what that means. What does it mean to improve audio and video ministry? Well, we're going to be looking at that as a church. We know we we have some uh, very objective things to work on with technology and, and things like that, but there's other things. Uh, so there is some interpretation in, in how the numbers and how the ideas themselves uh, will be implemented. Um, I think it's interesting if any of these results surprise you and you look and say, I wouldn't have guessed that our church would say this about that, that it's so low, so high, it's in the middle. Um, there are some surprises to me and I will point them out in a little bit. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, there was a lot of confusion about the highlighting. Um, people were really kind of thrown off by that. And so I tried to indicate um, in this little note section, that was just me um, pointing out points of interest. It's not meaning to challenge the scores or or overturn anything. They're just, as a pastor, things that I, I'm pointing out, things of note. Um, and uh, uh, that's all that they were. And I intended to have a meeting like this, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago uh, to also kind of explain what that means and why I highlighted them. And uh, so that's happening now. So are there any questions about the general structure of the survey results or anything like that before I start pointing out some things that I think are of interest. Okay. So um, I'm going to just kind of go back to the front page and kind of just go category by category. Not everything necessarily will I mention, but I am going to point out a few things, even more than just the highlighted ones and the circled things and why they're of interest to me. Under the church and Sabbath worship one, um, obviously it's very clear that uh, a high score, the highest score of all 
is uh, the desire to include kids and teens in worship, which I think is wonderful. I think it makes sense being on two school campuses and, and wanting to have uh, a, a very clear uh, inclusion of young people in worship. Uh, we do that to some degree, but it, it's largely um, 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 uh, informal how we're doing it now, like um, Sarah having her daughter, Addie, sing with her. You know, I didn't ask her to do that. She wasn't instructed to do it. She's a mom. She had her daughter. Her daughter was willing, and that's fine. I, I would like to see us explore how to be more intentional is the word. I think that we could be more intentional about creating opportunities to have a visible and active presence of young people in worship. And so I think that that's going to be a, a, a great opportunity for us. Two other things that I would note that are interesting to me um, about this category. Um, one other thing, I guess, actually. Go down to number eight. Go down to number eight in that category. More music ministers. Now, we actually have a pretty good variety in this church. It hasn't always been that way, um, and we've improved in that. But I, as I have gotten to know a lot of the music teams, they are often telling me they wish they had more people to fill in the slots. We're often going back to the same pool, um, and uh, uh, we have great willing people um, I don't feel that anyone is doing music ministry uh, begrudgingly or anything like that, but it is, and I think Arlene, um, who does a lot of the scheduling, um, would agree that sometimes uh, we're getting comments that we'd really like to have a break. Um, and uh, so having more music ministers surprised me that it wasn't a little higher, um, but not that we're doing bad in that area. It's just I'm hearing from some of our folks that they would like... Uh, more assistance in that area. So just, again, of interest. So you can look at the other numbers there and see how they fit. And uh, again, we will do our best to uh, uh, include as many of these in our uh, plans uh, moving forward. Going to the right then under outreach and evangelism, um, the regular outreach options that I highlighted, these were the not only the top ones in their category, these were the top two of all scores, including kids and teens and worship and regular outreach options. When we did our vision meetings together, um, I wasn't able to put all the detail of what these mean on the surveys. So I um, um, anticipated that people kind of understood their context. These were things like going down to the mission uh, or doing family promise or um, what's the one where you uh, package food for the homeless? Feed my starving children. Um, when, when, when that idea was generated during our meetings, it wasn't, it wasn't like an evangelistic series per se or anything like that. It was very felt need, um, uh, things to bless the less fortunate in our community or our neighborhood. That's what that meant. And that's how I am moving forward with that. This could also include things like, uh, uh, food baskets around the holidays for church members or people we know within our, our sphere of influence that may not have gifts for their children or food for the, uh, for the holiday meal or things like that. Um, and so we're going to be exploring together, um, how we can, uh, invite people then to step forward and be involved in this. And probably we're going to need to have, um, even a, a small group be kind of dedicated to um, being creative and coming up with those outreach options. Regular is, again, open for debate. What does regular mean? Once a week, once a month, once a year? Um, typically, as a pastor, uh, when in that kind of context, I think quarterly-ish, roughly four times a year. But um, it, we can always do more if we have the uh, energy and the resources, but uh, that would be what would jump to my mind. If you do it less than quarterly, and it's hard to say that's a real regular thing that you do, you know, if it's only once or twice a year. It's an annual thing, a semi-annual, something like that. Um, and so the other things, a lot of the other things in this category are very achievable things. They're not incredibly complex. Um, uh, incre you know, even though the scores are very spread out um, in how they are, but I don't see any reason why we can't do more of these things rapidly without waiting for like the top three things to be completed. Um, literature evangelism, making GLOW more accessible, making Bibles or Spirit of Prophecy uh, more accessible to people. I, I come from a, a, a mindset in a church that anyone who comes into a church and wants basic literature, I think the church should have it to give it to them. Um, and that includes very simple literature, Steps to Christ, even a Bible um, or tracts. 
you know, if we preach on the state of the dead or we, we're doing something on prophecy and someone says, that's crazy, I've never heard that before, I'd like to learn more, that you can have a, a Bible study or a track to say, well, you know, this is going to be a great start for you. Uh, so I'd love it if we had available resources, even a resource center, um, where we could give basic spirit of prophecy, Bible studies, uh, glow tracks, uh, even a Bible. Uh, Bibles, the ABC can sell very quality inexpensive gift Bibles. Um, and there's just no reason why anyone who wants a decent Bible shouldn't be able to get one when they come to church here. So that's something that I think is not complicated that we can do um, without having to uh, get extremely uh, uh, ahead of ourselves. So those are just some of the things that are in that category, and I'm excited to see them come to fruition. Uh, I will mention, like number three in that, social media. There's a lot of media-related things in this survey, and I'm just, I told you this church this when I interviewed here. This is not my strength. <laughs> I'm not on social media. I'm not super techie. I'm not opposed to it. I can, I've seen the blessings and benefits. But if this church really wants to have a robust social media outreach, marketing, ministry, evangelism, um, that is going to require someone who has a gift for that and a desire and a drive. Um, and again, I will support it. We will work to resource it. But um, that's just not something I am uh, blessed with. So it's high in that list, connect with social media, helping people connect with the church. This is in the evangelism, right? So this isn't just promoting, you know, VBS and, you know, something within the church family. This is an outreach element. Um, I will need someone who is, is familiar and excited and wants to make social media a, a stronger presence in the church. So we're going to have to pray about that and see what surfaces from that. Okay, next to the children and youth ministry category. Um, this is the one where there were two that really surprised me. And I mentioned this in church. I mean, I love the idea that we want to promote Yavapines. I do believe in camp. I spoke about camp uh, today in church because uh, one of our members mentioned being blessed by a song he learned in camp, and he's carried it with him for 25 years. So um, I think camp is a great thing, and I'm, I'm looking forward to being more robust uh, in, in all these things. Uh, but it did surprise me, number six, the one I've highlighted. Um, and I mentioned this in church. There is a disconnect in this church between understanding uh, that in order to accomplish virtually anything we want to do is going to take active, very engaged support from the laity. And um, I know we know that in our hearts, but why uh, having more volunteers ended up being so low is surprising to me. Um, I have preached multiple sermons since I've been here about needing more help in children's ministries and about trying to recruit and organize and develop more ministry teams. And we've talked about it in other settings and uh, other visioning meetings. Um, we, uh, I promoted uh, trying to get some of our uh, leaders to go to the children's ministry training that was at Camelback uh, uh, a while back. Um, so the fact that more volunteers ended up being so low, I'm just going to tell you the the things above that, the five things above more volunteers uh, are not going to happen unless we get more volunteers. You see what I'm saying? Who's going to teach the kids skits and dramas, right? Who's going to organize children's socials? Um, putting together the activity bags is something that, uh, I mean, it's certainly doable. I know we can find someone who would have a passion to put together some fun activity for the younger kids uh, when they're in church. Children-led service, promoting Yavapines. Again, we've we got to have, uh, uh, I, I use the word a lot, um, I'm sorry to say, but robust um, engagement from a wider variety of our church in order to do those things. So um, that one was a surprise to me. And then uh, number nine, the nine, having a ministry director, like an overseeing person that kind of looks at a variety of children's ministries, um, the fact that it, it came so low, again, it's just interesting because uh, those two go hand in hand, in my opinion. If you have someone who is focused completely on helping the church be successful in children's ministries, they will rally a team. They will get the schedules and the coordinating together. Um, and so uh, this is just the reality. We can wish and want for these things, but if we don't uh, have the physical support, um, they just will remain wishes and wants. And I hope that doesn't sound too harsh. I think that's fairly logical. Um, and I know the Lord wants to be bless us in that. Um, so we're going to pray about that and see what develops over time. I'm trying to honor my commitment to keep an eye on my messages. And uh, 
include anything there. And that this is my wife. But yeah, I got to pay attention to that. Okay. Um, she's just given me a list of things to do. That's what she does. All right. <laughs> no. Okay. So, um, and I would just, uh, this is an area, I mean, you guys are the church. I want you to tell me, am I wrong on this? Um, and I, it's not meant to lambaste or, uh, you know, put down the church. Um, I, it, 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 it's just one of these things that, uh, again, I feel there's a bit of a disconnect. Um, we, 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 uh, we want to see our kids and our youth supported and growing and moving, but we just simply do not have, uh, now there are things we could do to reorganize our existing ministries to be a little more efficient. And, and I look forward to talking with uh, some of our leaders and departments about how we can do that. Um, but in, in reality, um, we're going to, just going to have to see how the Lord, uh, uh, raises up. Um, a, a, a good number of people. And, I, and when I say more volunteers, I don't mean like one or two. We could really benefit from a, you know, a small tribe <laughs> just to do, just to do what most churches would consider kind of the basics of kids and youth ministry. And, uh, I think most of you know that, um, um, at currently we don't have a youth Sabbath school at all. Um, the, the academy used to keep it under their umbrella. And they're unable to continue doing that, and we understand that. Um, and we want to, you, you know, support uh, the staff and, and the kids. But um, as it stands right now, there is there is zero youth ministry. Zero. Uh, we're inviting the kids right now to come into the sanctuary for Sabbath school. And uh, if they want to come and do that, so we're kind of transitioning our sanctuary class into a, a, a co youth and, and uh, whoever comes type class, and we'll see how that goes. Um, and so we're praying about that. We're trying to figure it out. And again, I'm not here to say that you folks have to bring the answers or this is all on you, but this is something that should be part of our, our, our prayer uh, initiative and, and in our hearts and minds. Lord, how can our church be an inclusive church that doesn't leave out uh, the vital part of, of our uh, community, our kids and our youth? And so whether that means the Lord's going to bring new people or he's going to inspire current people. We don't know. Um, but uh, that's an area that, uh, again, is, is interesting. I would have been more uh, expecting to see someone, either the volunteers or the ministry director, in the top three. But the fact that we as a church kind of just said we have other things, it just, to me, is, is interesting. Is that okay? Any questions on that? Yeah, Chuck. Oh, yeah. Right. It is. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And and I know not everyone can hear um especially if you're watching online but uh Chuck is just asking, you know, what's the best me- best methodology to address this? Do we, you know, and and this is kind of the age-old question when it comes to our nominating committee. Do we say these are the positions we want to fill and then find people to fill them? Or do we say these are the people that we have Let's learn about who they are and what their gifts are and then uh, equip them to use their gifts. And in most things, I'm a moderate. I'm a both and. I, I try to see from both sides. And I think it's kind of both. There are essential things. There are positions. We need to have a treasurer. We just we can't just say, oh, if you, treasury is not your gift. Well, this church won't have a treasurer. This church won't have an elder. This church. There are positions that we need to fill that do essential things. But it's also true at times we pigeonhole people and say, well, we just got to have eight deacons. And if we don't have eight deacons, it's a bad thing. So uh, you, you're going to be a deacon. And even if they're like, well, that doesn't really go with what, you know, I'd rather be involved in X, Y, or Z. Um, so it's both. 
We want to, we want to help people find their, uh, giftedness, but we also have the basics that we do need to cover as a church. We need someone to keep the doors open and, uh, you know, help us with music and et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit of both. And same with children's ministries. Um, we wouldn't have had VBS this year if Lisa Heisey hadn't contacted me and said, Pastor, I don't see anyone doing this. Can I help? And I said, Lisa, go for it. And she rallied a team and got people involved. And I thought it was a huge success, a huge success. So that was something that, you know, came from her experience and her desire. And um, so that was wonderful. It was wonderful. And so sometimes they, things work out in a variety of ways. Uh, so I don't know if that answered your question. Okay. All right, so, you know, we want to, uh, and again, uh, churches are evaluating this new society and world we live in in, in, no, in a number of ways, and we're going to continue to find out what it looks like here for Scottsdale Thunderbird. But, um, again, I think we have a, a slightly higher uh, 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 expectation being that we are on uh, two school campuses, that uh, we would have a, a slightly higher investment and expectation for making sure we're uh, providing opportunities for our kids and youth to uh, develop. Next side then, uh, fellowships and church socials, a lot of good things on there. I, uh, you know, I kind of could have just highlighted the top thing in every category. Um, I, I decided to do the church camp out. I love church camp outs. I think they're awesome. I think they're fun. But here's the thing. They take a lot of work. And this kind of comes back down to more volunteers. I would support strongly someone who wanted to help develop this, find the right campground, try to make sure it works for the majority of our people. It's not too far away. It, you know, has, you know, good options for those who like to tent, maybe those who have RVs or there's a lodge nearby. You know, we want to try to make it so as many of our folk can be there and it's not too exclusive to one side or the other. Um, if it's going to be a general church camp out, I know that uh, PV and I think Camelback do a family camp together. Um, and I think we are supposed to be invited to that. I'm still new here. If we want to partner with another, this is what I'm getting at. If we want to partner with a community, another community church to, to make it all the more fun, that, that's fine with me. It's just in my experience, they take a lot of work. That's all I'm saying. But when they come together, I think they're one of the most fun things I can remember doing growing up is the church camp out. And it doesn't always have to be a, a woodsy type thing. Sometimes it can just be a picnic. It doesn't even have to be, you know, camping, but just outdoor church or uh, a picnic in the park or something like that. Um, so, again, it's number two in our fellowship ideas. And, and again, Derek and Lisa uh, are, are um, kind of uh, social team uh, organizers, and uh, I'm hoping we can uh, talk with them and see at what level they might want to help spearhead that or they might want to delegate it off. Um, and the other things, uh, again, uh, more potlucks, Sabbath afternoon hikes, theme potlucks, uh, video vespers. Uh, I've been hearing lots of talk of great video options that people can enjoy watching together and then having discussions for a Friday night or maybe a Sabbath afternoon. Um, I was a little sad to see that the chili cook-off was so low because I, I would love to... <laughs> <laughs> no, again, it doesn't mean we're not going to do it, and, and and it doesn't mean we have to wait till everything above it is done to perfection. Um, but we just want to give a good opportunity for the things that are higher to come to fruition before we put a lot of energy into the other ones. So we might. So, and I know the academy does a food fair, don't they? They already do a food fair. So I mean, whether we just kind of partner with them or send people over there, so um, it you know we can always be creative in that. So uh, some great ideas there. I'm not going to spend too much time in all these categories. Discipleship in small groups, um, health seminars and spiritual seminars were the two highest. Um, and so we do have people very interested in health ministry uh, in this church. And it could be that they've just not been empowered to move forward or given the right resources. But I'm looking forward to talking with them to see if, if they might want to do a cooking class or they might want to do an exercise class or a depression class or anything in the area of health. Um, because that was the number one thing. Spiritual seminars, there's a number of wonderful programs we could look at. I highlighted Sabbath afternoon Bible studies um, because it was a third on the list, and it came much higher than the midweek prayer meetings. You know, Traditionally, churches have a midweek meeting, at least in what, what I thought was traditional. And I know those have been waning over the years, the Wednesday night Bible study or the Wednesday night prayer meeting. Those have been kind of waning and, and, and uh, um, changing a bit. So it was just interesting to me that significantly more of our church members said, I would like an in-depth 
Sabbath afternoon Bible study. And I intend to uh, explore that and and uh, organize. Uh, we we'll probably won't do it every week to begin with, but from time to time, particularly after a potluck, very similar to what we'd do, be doing now, but I instead of saying, hey, guys, stay after potluck so that we can have a discussion time, I would say, hey, stay after potluck. We're going to meet in the church, and we're going to have a Bible study. And uh, I'd meet with whoever wanted to come, and we would kind of set a pattern of what do we want to study, topics or a Bible or a... Um, uh, you know, a certain book of the Bible or maybe a theme. Uh, let's talk about it and, and we'll see if, uh, you know, kind of people kind of put their feet where their, uh, where their uh, scores were. Um, and if we get a, a group of, you know, six, seven, eight, ten people that want to be committed to that, uh, we could do that. Um, again, probably not every week. I couldn't, I couldn't commit to it every week, but at least, uh, uh, once or twice a month, I think we could make that happen and, People and I, again, I just think logically, when when it's after potluck, people or at least some people that choose to stay um, wouldn't have to run away to a lunch. So, anyways, that's why I highlighted that one. The other ones are fine too, and we will work on uh, fitting them into our schedule. At any point, if you got a question or a comment, just raise your hand, guys. I know we've just eaten and everyone's a little tired. School support, T A A T C E. Um, again, this is kind of a newer idea. There was some confusion in some of the surveys that I can tell as people were scoring, trying to understand what the difference between that is and children ministries, and and that's fine. Um, uh, uh, in, encouraging the kids to come over and participate in the church for National Honor Society, that's what NHS stands for, was number one. So, I mean, we can look at that, and actually, I want to... Uh, Catherine, since you're here, I want to work with the deans uh, too and find out how we can, especially our dorm kids, because the other kids on campus, a lot of them have their home churches. Um, not all of them. Many of them are community kids that do come to our church. Um, but particularly the dorm kids, I want them to feel like this is their church home when they're here. And uh, I don't want them just sitting on as a bump on the log every time they come to church on Sabbath. I want them to feel like if they have some gift that they can give, uh, uh, even if it's, uh, occasionally helping out with sound or some of them are musical or maybe helping out with kids in Sabbath school or greeting or, I mean, any number of things, um, uh, to, to help kids. And then if they can get volunteer credit through National Honor Society, it's a win-win. I put prayer partners as my highlighted point of interest. Um, it did score low on our church side, but I circled the dorm one. And the reason I did that, and again, it's hard to know what's going on in the mind of a young person when they score it, but I guess I was surprised, maybe even discouraged, that virtually no dorm kids felt that having someone pray for them was a significant thing that they wanted to score. And again, maybe that's a very derogatory way of looking at it. I don't know what was going on in their minds, Um, but just spiritually if I knew that there was a group that said, hey, we'd like to pray for you, Pastor David. We'd like to pray for your family. We'd like to pray. I, I wouldn't be like, well, if you want to, if you got time. I'd be like, would you? Oh, my God. Thank you. I, that would be awesome. So I was a little surprised and, and, yes, even discouraged to see that the dorm students basically did not want any – I mean, they didn't score. And, again, what they understood that meaning – Maybe maybe they thought it would you know invade their privacy. I don't know, but traditionally most people I think know that prayer partners is just someone out there praying for you. Okay, Dan, you've had your hand up. Yeah, and again, I'll try to repeat it for everyone. And Daniel, you're being, trying to be very fair, and I think that's fine. It, it, it could be that they just saw other things that caught their eye a little quicker and they scored it. Of course, you want to be careful not to psychoanalyze this too much. Uh, but it just, it, as a pastor who believes in, in prayer and the power of prayer, um, it was a concern to me. Um, if, 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 uh, the dorm students did not see that as a valuable thing worthy of their, uh, asking for. That's, that's really, uh, what uh, I saw that. And not just that it ranked a little bit low, but I mean, devastatingly low. All right, Vince.
Okay, so yeah, uh, mentioned a little earlier, 25. We had 25 of our dorm kids that filled out the survey. So that's 25 of, of the student body. So obviously this isn't the whole school. This is just, and I think we only have about 30 in the dorm. So this got all but a handful. Um, this was just dorm students. This is not a survey of all academy students. Yeah, we got most of the dorm students. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. And you guys are very, uh, you know, wise to give, a, you know, uh, deference and a grain of salt to all this. And this is where I wish we had a handful of dorm kids here. And it just so happens that they're not here. But um, and not if they're timid, obviously, they're not going to jump up and say, well, Pastor Dave, I want to tell you all about it. But I do want to get to know the dorm kids. I want to get to know their personalities, and and if they are going to be engaged in church or they do want to have uh, a connection with the church here, um, you know, how best we can uh, make that happen. So it could be shyness, timidity, a sense of privacy. There's a whole lot of things. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yep, we're learning and we're 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 growing. Uh, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, again, to repeat uh, that it's growing uh, 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 skepticism about organized religion and, uh, you know, young people want a little higher level of intimacy and they uh, want a, a, you know, deeper relationship and that plays into this. So, um, all those things I think are, are valid. Sure. So again, there's some, some great things there and we can continue to explore those. Um, that's one that stood out to me. Uh, the facility finance and staffing, uh, I mean, very high on, uh, addressing church debt. And we're blessed that we don't have tremendous debt in this church, but it does, if we're going to get it paid off sooner, it will take a, a vision. It will take a, procedure and an, an additional amount uh, that we would want to commit to getting that paid off. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. The other things there uh, I think are pretty straightforward. Um, again, the two areas where it would increase um, uh, uh, the number of hours people investing, again, it some, somewhat surprised me that um, uh, uh, continuing to pursue the idea of additional pastoral support and then also increasing the secretary hours were a little low on that. Again, not because those are terrible things, but just that if we had those elements, we'd be able to do more of the things that we have there. So it's just interesting to me, um, and that's fine. It, it's not meant to be a criticism. It's just an interest. Most of these are very, very achievable things, and they are not uh, pie-in-the-sky things. I think we can really make them happen. All right, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. I love the fact that this church, on average, thought it was appropriate to want to have eight baptisms a year. Um, that may not sound a lot, but that's actually pretty aggressive. We average about two a year now. Um, going back, 
I think I went back 10 years. Over the last 10 years, we average about two. Now, I don't know if those averages were academy kids getting baptized here, but not keeping their, you know, if it's a dorm student, we baptize them here, but they put their membership in Prescott or Yuma or wherever they're from. So I don't know if the baptisms recorded in the past were ones that physically took place here, but membership didn't come or, you know, I don't know those specifics, but just what's recorded in e-Adventist, um, we average two a year and, um, and, and, and that's fine. But eight is, is great. Eight is very, um, um, I think exciting. Um, that again, it seems eight people, but no, that, that really is, um, I think an important and good number. The other numbers there are, are, I think, very interesting and good. I think they're valid. I highlighted the monthly budget one, um, because it was, uh, very, <coughs> excuse me, encouraging to see that this church feels in the, in, by the end of this visioning process, by the end of 2026, we should have a much higher budget than we have now. Um, that, that should happen both through church growth. If we do grow, obviously that's going to bring in new people that love the church and want to support what's going on. But, um, also statistically, we have room to grow even within our own community of, of, uh, finding ways to help people get excited about what's going on here and supporting the mission of the church. Um, that's a 42% increase from what we're currently budgeting. So paying off church debt in five years, that won't be a problem if we raise our budget 42%. That's going to be easy. And many of these other things. And by the way, that, that's not unachievable. I've been in this business a long time. I've been in, I like finances. I like rows and columns and things adding up right. It's kind of a, a I'm kind of, is that a right brain? Left, that's a right brain thing. I'm kind of right brain. Left brain's artistic side, right? Is it left brain is artistic and right is a little more factorial? Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm of the type that, that, that kind of appeals to me. So I'm very familiar with, uh, kind of, tr- uh, what a typical church and a community does. So these are not pie in the sky things. These are very achievable. And, uh, if we can get close to that, uh, um, I think that we'll not have any problem, uh, meeting our facility and capital needs. Um, then on the back, um, I'm not gonna go all of them. It. It's just looking at the same numbers, but instead of by category, it's just an order of the gross number. So it just goes high to low. And then I've broken it up into the top 10, the medium, those that received at least 50% of church members. I put that in the medium. At least 50% of the people that scored it gave some score to that. And then the low priority. And again, I've highlighted some, some things that are of interest um, to me. And some of them I've already mentioned. Um, the one that I've circled under low priority, more, more potlucks, that happens to be the highest priority of the dorm students. So even though it's a low priority to the church, you know, it's subjective, dorm kids said without fail, that's what they want to see. So I think that should weigh in our planning. You know, I don't, I, I think that that should impact us. That doesn't mean necessarily we're going to start doing potluck every week, but if we can organize a structure, to increase our potlucks, I think that's a blessing and a service to our, our, our kids. And, uh, it's another thing, uh, again, I'm sorry to point you out, Catherine, but just because you are one of the, uh, the deans on campus, I, I would kind of throw it back in their face and say, would you, would you as dorm students, would you be one of our potluck teams then? You guys, you know, that will spread out the work. Say just about once every other month, you're going to have potluck more often, but about once every other month, we would need your help to get the paper products out, make sure the ovens are on, do some cleanup afterwards. It gives them a chance to help that which they themselves have said is a great priority to them. It's just an idea. Um, so, uh, and then I mentioned in church too, the very, very last thing, secret sisters. And again, the reason I circled that is because it's so gender oriented, obviously not a lot of boys said, yay, give us secret sisters, that's gonna be great. So actually, even though it's very low, among the dorm girls, it was very high. It was very high. Virtually every girl said that they would value that among the dorm girls. So um, I thought that was interesting. So food for thought for you and Ashton if, if you wanted to organize something just within the dorm, just with the girls, or maybe beyond that. I don't know. It just, that's, again, when you dig into the data, you see all these interesting things. So, yes, I'm kind of done now, and... uh 
whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was really uh, fun to go through this. And again, you get to hear the personality of the church and personality of people as they they score this, and you learn uh, a lot. And uh, I could point out, I've been pouring over this data for, for a couple months now. Um, so I could I could spend all day just pointing out things that were... I think exciting to me, interesting, something I need to figure out more. Um, but uh, um, even things like uh, hymnals and pew racks, when you look under facility finance and staffing, it's, it's low on the list, but it was interesting how high it was for the dorm students. Um, and not all dorm surveys were created equal. Some only filled out about half of it. You could tell that some took it a little more serious than others. So you, there's always a little bit of a grain of salt. But as I was filling it out, it was there was a consistency of the number of dorm kids that said they missed hymns and they wanted to see hymns and hymn racks or a pew racks in the, in the church. Uh, not like their number one. It wasn't pressing. There, I don't think there were any tens on there from the dorm kids. But just uh, we sometimes pigeonhole our kids and say, oh, these young people, they just want all the Chris Tomlin contemporary songs. They don't like the hymns. Um, uh, that didn't prove to be the case with uh, how our dorm kids filled it out. There was a statistically significant number of them that said that was important to them, and I thought that was interesting. That was interesting. Um, and so I've actually ordered, put some thought into how we could get pew racks in here, and it's just, it's elbow grease. It's really not expense. Uh, buying the materials is really not that expensive. Um, it's the installation process. You know, getting down on your hands and knees and putting one on every back of every one of these pews is not going to be a uh, an hour in the afternoon. It's going to be a, a project. Um, and again, it's not our number one thing. We're not going to start doing it tomorrow. Um, but it is something in the next five years. I'd like to say by the end of five years, we ought to have pews and pew racks, communion cup holders, even Bibles in our pews. Oh my goodness, Bibles in our pews. What would we do if that happened? Yeah. No, I think we should just do the front pews, just the front, and tell them if you want to have a pew, if you want to have a hymnal, you got to come up front. Well, that's one strategy. I was thinking we could do it every other pew. I know. When people, those that want hymnals, they still have that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so there's, I think there's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen. And remember, some of these things can happen at the same time. Some are very, like making activity kid, uh, packs for kids. That's something, if I can just find one church member who says, I'd love to do that, I'm not going to say, well, we can't do it yet because we've got to promote Yava Pines first. And once we're done with the Yava Pines, then we need to have children-led worship services. Once that's done, then we can do it. That's not how this is meant to be. I mean, some things we do need to, uh, uh, you know, pace ourselves a little bit with. But um, if, if I found someone who said, look, I'd be happy to make seven, eight fun activity bags and I'll monitor it, make sure crayons are replaced and uh, anything that's broken and I'll make sure they're kept clean. And um, I, I'm sure we've got a handful of, of, of families that might benefit to have a, a small activity bag. Yeah. That's different than saying we need somebody to be here all the time. I know. Some of these things are solvable very quickly. Others are going to be a more longer discussion. Some of these, if a person is uh, excited about leadership in an area, it actually can overlap another area or two. Yeah. And it's a really nice fit to, to you know, 
God who will come. Yeah. I say that about things that I'm interested in. It's like, wow, <laughs> there's probably like cool things that are all under that umbrella for you that you just don't know. So the next step for us is, um, this will be part of um, our work as a church board when we meet. We're going to start working on creating ways to bring some of these to fruition. Um, I'm going to be working with individuals in the church that I know might have ideas in these areas and try to empower and resource them. And then just little by little, um, we want to start working on these ideas and, uh, and, and continuing to sell this to our church family and get people to engage. And like I said at the beginning, I really ask people, don't come up with ideas or don't score highly ideas if you're not willing to put effort into it. And uh, like p- to paying off the church in five years, excuse me, paying off the debt in five years, that's a fairly academic mechanical thing. We can come up with that number very easily and say if we just paid an, an extra, I'm just throwing out a number, 1500 a month, we'd have it paid off. 1500 a month for five years. Okay, well, let's create the, the paradigm and then put your your faith into that and let's see the dollars start rolling in. We'll have a pledge campaign. We'll come up with thermometers you know, that bust and we get to celebrate and have balloons when we reach different thresholds. And that one's easy. Uh, but hopefully people will step into those things that they said they want to see happen in their church. So I don't know if this has been uh, uh, an overwhelmingly inspirational time for you this afternoon um, uh, or if this was just pretty much kind of what you expected and you didn't learn a lot um, I, I don't know what uh, you were hoping or expecting I'm always happy to talk more with you if you have more specific questions ideas or suggestions um, but uh, I just wanted to uh, spend some time with the church um, kind of breaking this down showing you some things that I saw and um, uh, kind of explaining where we're going from here so That's pretty much all I have for you this afternoon, unless there's uh, uh, anything else um, that I can talk about. (laughs) We do, don't we? We had 14 today. And we currently, at this very moment, have six. Yeah. So we... <clears throat> That's how many have tuned in live to the live stream. Um, during the week, we have people that will look at the archive video. Um, I don't really pay attention to that because I'm doing the, the live stuff. So. Yeah. Back in 2020, when there was no attendance, one thing that I thought was really a great thing for the time was that they were practicing having people in their homes doing a music, you know, uh, contribution, but it was, you know, the video was streamed through. So that they could do it in that way. And so they split it up. Um, what I think is a wonderful way to bridge some of the things that you mentioned about sure. people not attend or people yeah. not attend home, if they had attendance in their home, they had what? You said gifts. Yep. They would have had a different approach to it. They would have had people talking to them about their experience. Yeah. <coughs> That would kind of go along with the social media. I was just thinking that, George. Yeah, you know, one thing the pandemic created is uh, new ways of thinking about doing things. And I've seen examples of very amazing, inclusive ways that churches have incorporated their online audience with the live audience and, and matched those together. So I know there's potential and possibility of different platforms and different softwares and different, you know, things that can be done. Uh, for those that, uh, you know, are watching online uh, or, or have to be online. Um, so it's just a matter of, of finding, you know, again, someone that has a passion for that and an expertise in that to test it out, get, do some trials 
and and see if that could be successful. So it, it's definitely a possibility, and I know churches are, are are experimenting and working on that. So it's it's possible. You never know. You never know. Well, I'm going to go ahead and and wrap this up then. I uh, um, again, I'm glad that you came uh, this afternoon. We have a small group here, a small group online. Um, I think this is being recorded though, so I, I I can refer people to watch it if they said, "Oh, I missed it," and I can say, "Well, you can still watch it at least get the get the basic information." Um, so that is valuable as well. That um, uh, I am correct, George, that it'll be viewable later on. It should be. Um, Steve may have to do that. Post it. Okay, so um, we'll maybe reach out to Stephen and ask him to do that. So at least it's there um, and. Uh, yeah. So if you have any other questions, please just I'd love to talk with you about it and work with you. And I have great, great hope and expectations that we're going to benefit from uh, this process and see some great things happen for the Lord, for our people and for our church in the next five years. Let me pray. God in heaven, thank you, Lord, uh, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, thank you that you are always with us and nothing will ever separate us from your love and from your attention. So God, just give us wisdom as we uh, move forward as a church, as we use the information that we have as a template uh, to give us a direction. And God, uh, we submit all of our plans to you first and foremost and ask that you would bless them and direct as you would have us go. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, thank you so much. We will see you next week, hopefully, by God's grace. <laughs>